Top Thrill 2, Cedar Point's latest announcement and soon to be newest roller coaster. Now, right off the bat, no matter what, I feel like some people will find this video controversial, and as from what I've seen so far, this is already a quite controversial renovation, but I'm going to try my best to talk about all aspects of this project, talking about all of my thoughts and expectations. So for anyone that's been living under a rock for the past two years or so, allow me to explain this project. Top Thrill Jackster originally opened at Cedar Point on May 4th of 2003. This ride initially boasted the records for being the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster, featuring a newly developed hydraulic launch design designed by Intamin, allowing the trains to accelerate from 0 to 120 miles an hour in around 4 seconds. From there, the train would shoot up a 420-foot top hat followed by a 270-degree spiraling return to Earth before gliding into the final brake run. I swear, this isn't one of my 60-second reviews. On August 15th of 2021, however, a flag plate, aka a metal bracket attached to the underside of the train, detached during the ride's launch, and unfortunately struck a bystander in line for the attraction, immediately hospitalizing her. Since then, the ride has been permanently shut down and was announced to never operate quote-quote as we know it, and will be reimagined later on. This caused an eruption of speculation within the coaster community, involving some pretty creative concepts and hypothetical renovations that could occur with this coaster. And that leads us to today, August 1st of 2021. Where Cedar Point has finally announced the exact details, giving us a much clearer idea as to what we can expect out of this reimagining of Top Thrill Jackster. So, for starters, I want to discuss the name and theme. Right off the bat, a lot of people seem to be unsatisfied with the name. And granted, I think there could have been some much better names they could have picked, but I also like the idea of trying to keep the original name in some form, as opposed to entirely changing it and marketing it as an entirely different ride. From a general public standpoint, a lot of people will remember the ride as Top Thrill Jackster, and by flat out calling it Top Thrill 2, for marketing purposes, everyone will be familiar with the ride already and will associate it with the original Top Thrill Jackster. As for the theme, it's still racing themed, so I love that. And also the color scheme. I think this is probably one of the best color schemes they could have gone with, as I think white contrasts amazingly with black or dark gray, which is what they went with. I'm also excited to see that they are keeping the striped track idea on both the spike and the top hat. Now let's talk about the ride experience. And here's where things start to get controversial. As just about everyone expected, the ride will feature a swing LSM launch, with the first one taking you from 0 to 74 miles an hour, about halfway up the top hat. The second one will take you from whatever leftover speed you have to 101 miles an hour backwards up a 420 foot spike and then finally you will execute the third and final launch to 120 miles an hour up and over the top hat with the rest of the ride being identical to the original dragster the biggest concern with this reimagining that i've seen so far is going to be the loss of intensity on the launch as the hydraulic launch is famously known for offering a super intense launch sensation with its incredible level of acceleration as opposed to lsm launches which will offer a much more gradual level of acceleration so yes without a doubt we will be losing one of the main components that made Top Thrill Jackster such an elite ride, but I don't think it's all a total loss, as there are some other great substitutes that I feel can excuse the absence of the hydraulic launch. First and foremost, we're going from one launch to three launches, which is already a gain. I personally absolutely love backwards launches, like on Skyrocket 2s, or like on Mr. Freeze, or even on Sunday the Ride. This makes me super hyped up for the backwards launch that will take you slightly faster and higher than that of Sunday the Ride, and I imagine will be more intense since you have a higher speed going into the launch initially, and also because Sunday the Ride is notorious for having an extreme gradual launch, as it was one of the first coasters to ever feature a magnetic launch system. So I find it kind of cool that the entire ride experience of Sunday the Ride is now present inside of Top Thrill 2. As for the third and final launch, yes, you will feel less acceleration, however, you will already be entering this launch at about 100 miles an hour or so. So imagine already going at such an insane speed, especially with that wind in your face, and then furthermore, speeding up to go even faster. I'd argue that the third launch will still be one of the best launches ever. I imagine it will feel like Full Throttle's third launch, or Velocicoaster's second launch, but on steroids. From there, the entire rest of the ride probably won't feel any different, with the only actual difference being the trains that you'll be riding in, Zamperla's new lightning trains. So overall, I still feel that the ride experience will still be world class, and this will still most likely be a top 4 Cedar Point coaster, and although I personally prefer King Daka over the original Top Thrill Jackster, I expect that a lot of people will continue to have Top Thrill 2 ranked higher than King Daka. Now, although I'm very pumped and optimistic about this new reimagining, I would like to talk about a few disappointments. For starters, I feel that it's not entirely fair to blame Cedar Point for the minimal adjustments to the layout over Overall, as I feel that the community kind of exaggerated the potential changes with some pretty all-out concepts, and I love those concepts and the ideas in terms of what this ride could have become, but it kind of gave everyone false hope, and in turn led to disappointment within the community. But anyways, for me personally, I do feel that there could have been some minor adjustments to enhance the original layout, and I'm really talking about some airtime hills. It's not uncommon at all nowadays to have LSM launches during an airtime hill, and I personally think that if the launch was converted into a giant, stretched-out bunny hill, it would have made both the second and third launches phenomenal, and could have even surpassed 
past the hydraulic launch in terms of excitement. Backwards airtime on a launch is unlike anything I've ever experienced before, and I couldn't even imagine a 120 mile an hour launching bunny hill. And then of course we have the final brake run. One of the biggest reasons as to why I have King Daka ranked higher than original Dragster is because of the giant airtime hill following the top hat, which offers some of the longest and best sustained floater airtime ever. This was Cedar Point's perfect opportunity to incorporate something similar into Top Thrill 2's layout, which would have given it a much stronger and more prominent finale. But instead, we'll still have to live with the same 420 foot drop immediately into a brake run. So overall, this project certainly has both pros and cons, but nonetheless, it's still a 120 mile an hour, 420 foot strata coaster, and I'm super pumped to experience this ride for my first time next summer, as I do plan on traveling to Cedar Point again to experience this legendary ride. I'd love to hear what your own thoughts and opinions are on this reimagining, so feel free to comment your thoughts down below. Also, if you made it through this whole video, DM me a checkered flag emoji on Discord, and I will give you 10 points in my Discord server. Anyways, thanks for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day.